Have you ever wondered how chatbots, autocomplete suggestions, or even some text-based games are able to generate text that's almost human-like? Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that using the Markov chain. So the first thing we want to do is create a file called index.js. So inside of here, all it's going to be is two functions and then the input data at the bottom. So it's very simple. First function we're going to create is train the Markov chain, and that's going to take in a text parameter. And then inside of here, what we want to do is split those words that we just had. So we're going to say const words is equal to text dot split. Then we're going to split that by a space. And that way that will create an array of all the words. Next, we want to create an array for our transitions. This is the transitions between each word. So we create a transitions and that will just be equal to an empty object for now. And once we've done that, we want to start looping over our words. So we say for let i is equal to zero, i is less than words.length minus one, and then i plus plus. So inside of this for loop, we're going to create a new constant called current words, and that's going to be equal to words i, so the current index of the words array. Next, we're going to create the next word, and that's going to be equal to words i plus one. Once we've done that, we need to check that the transitions has the current word inside of it as a key. And if it doesn't, we need to create an array to store those transitions. So we're going to say if transitions current word doesn't exist, that's this exclamation mark at the front here, then what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty array inside of there. And then once we've done that, we can push that word into that array. And then we can close that for loop and just return back the transitions. So up next, we have our function to generate the actual text. So let's create a function called generate text. And that's going to take in three parameters. It's going to have a transactions, an initial word, and also the number of words that we want to return. So we're just going to set a few variables here. So we're going to first variable is going to be current word, and that's going to be equal to initial word. Next up, we're going to have a result. And that's going to be equal to the current word that we just set. And up next is where the magic is going to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to generate the number of words in addition to the current word. So we're going to say for let i is equal to zero. i is less than number of words, i plus plus. And then we need to get the possible next words. So we're going to say const possible next words. And that's going to be equal to transaction and the current word that we've set here. So if there aren't actually any next words, so if the possible next words or the possible next words length is equal to zero, then we're just going to stop. So if it didn't break there, what we want to do is we want to get to the next random word. So we can say const random index is equal to math floor. Then inside of floor, we're going to have math.random times the possible next words.length. Then we can inject that into the possible next words to get the actual next word. And then we're just going to append that next word to results and update the current words. So we can then close off that for loop and then we can just return the result. So now that we've done that, we're going to create a few variables. The first one's going to be the text that we want to use. I'm just going to leave that as an empty string for now. And then next is the transactions, and that will be equal to train Markov chain, and we're going to inject that text into there. And then we need to set the initial word. So the initial word will be something that's included inside of this text. Now this word has to exist inside of this text in order for that to work. Um, what you can do is if you don't know the text that's being injected into here, then we could say, for example, text dot split and split by the spaces and then take the first one there and that will return based on the first word that we get in the text here. So if for here I was to say this chatbot is amazing then the initial word will be this. So once we have that we can start inputting that data into our generate text function. So we say const generate text is equal to generate text and that takes the transaction, the initial word and we're actually going to create, this is the number of words, we're actually going to create a new variable for number of words. We're just going to have that equal to 10 for now, because our string is not going to be that long. And then we replace this with num words. And that's it, that's everything we need to do. So the last thing we need to do is just console log out the generated text. 
So let's just create a bit of text at the beginning here so we can see that that's our generated text. Click save. And then we need a bit of text to put into here. So I'm just going to change this to back ticks just so in case there's any punctuation in the text I'm copying. I found a bit of text from a marketing site about ChatGPT. So if we hit save and go to terminal, new terminal, and we can run node index. And we can see here that this long text here has been split down to 10 words and it's done all the calculations, all the maths, all the probabilities of what potential word could come next based on the text I've inputted. Now remember, this is only a very small bit of text, but it's come back saying ChatGPT has a lot of advantages that can be extremely useful. So if we look in here, we can actually see that that text doesn't exist inside of that string. So this is a brand new string based off of this text here. So we can also try this with uh, news headlines. So let's paste in a news headline and see what we get back. Let's put the number of words down to six, for example, hit save, run node index again. So stock market hits new highs as investors. So that would have been a great one to stop here. So stock markets hits new highs. We can also try tweets. So just had the best cup of coffee ever. It came back with just had the best cup of coffee. We can try it again, see what it comes back with. Just had the best cup of coffee. So there's not enough text in there for that. So let's drop that down to four, hit save and retry that. Just had the best cup. Let's also try a bit of classic literature. So we've got some Pride and Prejudice here. And we'll increase the, because it's quite a long string, we'll increase this to 20, for example. And we get it is so well fixed in the mind of their daughters. And lastly, let's try a random sentence, which is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Let's get that down to 12, for example. And we get returns the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Pizza is a lifelong. Now remember, the more text that we have in here, the better the result that we're going to get out because it can create more connections between the words. As we saw with the tweets and the news headlines, it's not great when they're very short. So we could possibly change this. We have a completely separate corpus to have alongside this text that they input. So say, for example, if we wanted to do code generation, we could actually have a library of code and then they input a bit of code and it would also go against that library of code that we had. If you'd like to see that, please leave a comment. I can quickly create that. So that was the Markov chain. Things like this are used in AI. For example, if someone says, oh, can you make this sentence shorter or can you paraphrase this paragraph? This is the sort of thing that will be used for that. ChatGPT may be using more advanced systems, but it's all based on this core elements of the Markov chain. In future videos, we're going to be running over how to create every little piece of a chatbot. That way we can build them all together and actually build a system that is very similar to ChatGPT. But not using Python, we're going to be using JavaScript for all of this. I'm going to try and not use any third party libraries. We want this to be vanilla so you understand exactly what's happening every step of the way. If there are any particular subjects you'd like me to touch on regarding AI, please leave a comment below. And funnily enough, I did notice during this recording, I did start changing the word transitions to transactions. Um, I did actually mean those to be transitions. So whether you want to change your variable names to be transitions rather than transactions, it won't make much of a difference, but it'll make it easier for you to read. Also not look at just creating the JavaScript for this. We can also look at creating a full front end system for customers to use um, and whether that's just customers for actually using the AI that you're creating or whether that's for them to create their own AI based off the back of your AI. So more like the fine tuning sort of bits, but we'll cover all of that in future videos. If you found this video useful and like to learn more about JavaScript and AI, check out this video here. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button here. Thank you for watching.